These scientists discovered something, a thing called fetal microchimerism. Have any of you heard of this? Amazing. Okay. What they discovered is that when a woman, any woman, all of you who, who are here who have been pregnant, this applies to you as well. You're going to be blown away by this. Any woman who becomes pregnant, okay, even if that woman suffers a miscarriage, even if that woman tragically makes the wrong choice and gets rid of the life within her through an abortion, or if the baby comes to full term and is, sees the light of day, cells are exchanged between the mother and the child, living cells, so that after either a miscarriage, tragically, sadly, an abortion, or birth, those cells will remain in your body, ladies, for the rest of your life. You have, and if you didn't know it, you're probably going to start crying. You have living cells of all your children in your body right now. Right now. Even if you had a miscarriage. Right now. And that's not it. It doesn't end there. That's amazing. But it also happens the other way. That us, all of us, who come from a mother, we have the cells, living cells, of our mothers in us, in our bodies. You ever, the scientists were kind of joking around with it and they said, maybe this will help explain how we always say that mother has some intuition about her children. She always knows when something's not right. You can try and fake it, and I did. You know, I'd come home, whatever, and she would know. I could try and put on my smiley face, put, you know, uh, red eye or whatever that stuff is in my eyes, try to get the, you know, red eye out and try and look presentable. But she would know, Donnie, what's wrong? I'm like, how does she do that? The scientist said, it's not that your mother's looking over your shoulder, she's in your shoulder. <laughs> Somehow there's such an intimate bond between a mother and her children that there's this living exchange of cells that happens for the rest of life. And in the life of the mother, scientists discovered that when a woman becomes sick, who has been a mother, they noticed certain clusters of cells from her body going to the ill area in her body. Whatever it was, whatever area, there would be a cluster of cells that would go to this area and would be seeking to make her well, to fight off the whether it was the disease, whether it was a sickness, whatever it was. And guess what cells those were? The cells of your children. See, maternity has its blessings. Big time. That's why even at the beginning when... Adam and Eve fell, when God says, it, you know, you will be saved through childbearing, the word saved literally means health. Ultimate salvation is eternal life with God, ultimate health. When those cells run to the defense of the mother, even if the child no longer is here on earth through a miscarriage or through an abortion, your child is fighting to save your life in your body. That's amazing. Now, let's apply this to Jesus and Mary. Okay, we've got the handmaid of the Lord, who the Holy Spirit fructifies and makes fertile, and the second person of the Blessed Trinity enters into her body and is there for nine months, and then comes through her body, born into the world. But does that mean that he's still not there? Nope. Science now would be able to even tell us that even after the birth of Jesus Christ through the womb of Our Lady, He, God Almighty, the God-Man, God, omnipotent, omniscient, almighty, I am, lived continually in her body through the cells that were exchanged. She's a living, walking tabernacle. This is why when she comes on the scene, she's not alone. This is why people say, you know, I've heard people, theologians, say, oh, you know, we don't like those paintings that, that show Mary crushing the head. Technically, it's Jesus. He's the sole redeemer. Okay, wise guy. <laughs> but see, science even tells us now that 
even after he was born, he's still there. She's not the Redeemer. You're right. She's not the Savior. You're right. However, he's still alive, even in her body. And when she comes on the scene, it is actually her and Jesus through her crushing the head of the serpent. That's why we call her the terror of demons, the conqueror of all heresies. Satan hates her. The bookends of history are about what? From Genesis to Revelation. Satan, Lucifer, the devil, the dragon, attacking the woman. Right? So clear. Genesis chapter 3, Revelation chapter 12. The bookends of human history. Satan hates her. Because she is that creature, so exalted, so humble, living tabernacle of God, mother of Jesus Christ, that brings the light into the world. And without her... We're in the dark.